Hello, my name is Steve from Cad School, and this is my presentation on Nifty Nerbs, or maybe they should be called Nerbs for Nerds. So, what are Nerbs? Nerbs are 3D curves. Um, all these these curves have been converted to uh, Nerbs. Nerbs stands for non-uniform rational B-spline, and this is a Nerbs. Uh, by extrapolation, though, Nerbs have been uh, uh, generally more associated with uh, NURB surfaces. And NURB surfaces are a bit like cloth. So cloth has like NURB's curves, you could say, running through it um, horizontally and vertically. And uh, when we make um, a NURB surface, instead of uh, weft and warp, which cloth uses, we talk about a U-direction and a V-direction. Thankfully, we don't have to do all the curves, though, through a, a method of interpolation. We can make a bunch of curves, and then from those curves, we can make a NURB surface. So we're going to take these NURB surface, use the loft surface tool to join this one to this one to this one, hit return or click on the tick, and we can see um, a NURB surface. And that NURB surface is still editable. I can go in and edit it by double-clicking, which takes me to the reshape tool. And with the reshape tool, I can start messing around with this surface, either by moving individual points, like this one here, if I move that vertically, or by moving combinations of points, which are like the U and the V um, curves that we talked about later earlier. So if I go to the other one, I can go to the vertical and maybe lift that string or that string up or down. And it's very useful in uh, Vectorworks when you're working in a particular axis. I'm, I'm now in the Z, tap the T key, and you can force it to stay in that axis. Okay, so moving on. We're now making NURB surfaces. All right, let's just go back to my Blue Peter like presentation. And uh, I want to talk about um, joining NURBS now. N NURBS have all sorts of capabilities which are quite unique to them and one of these capabilities is the ability to join NURBS together. So I've got here a mirrored version of my previous NURBS surface. And what we're going to do here is actually to use um, the Connect Combine tool which now a lot of these tools uh, many people think that they're 2D tools. They're not the basic tools and they often apply to 2D and 3D objects. Even the knife tool you can slice through that NURBS to cut it um, in two or to trim a bit off. Anyway, more about that later maybe. So I'm going to connect this this surface to this surface and when it when you do that it gives us some choices to how to connect the two and I'm going to do that using a blend piece. So now that's one NURB surface and uh, we've connected the two together smoothly. Uh, if I go to the OpenGL options, I can make it look a lot smoother as well by going too high or, or very high for the NURBS surfaces. Um, NURB surfaces can also um, become solids in a number of ways. And one of these ways I'm going to show here is by thickening this NURB surface, which we, we're going to do by the uh, Shell Solids tool. So here we've got the Shell Solids tool, and we can uh, click on the single surface hit return or click, click, click on the tick and we've thickened that surface. We can tell it to go up or down from the original surface and we can still edit the, um, the thickness of that object. Now I have told you earlier that NURBS are everywhere in Vectorworks and it's the technology that underpins everything in Vectorworks. So we've got here a couple of extrusions and even a wall here and I'm going to perform some uh, 3D operations on this on these objects to make them into something slightly different. So using my deform tool here I'm going to use the twist on this object and you know, wind it up a little bit like this. Um, I'm going to take uh, the bend tool um, on this object and we're going to bend this from here to here maybe around to here and we're going to use the taper solids tool on this in fact I think I'm going to use the taper face tool on this and using this as a reference shape I've tapered my wall like that now if before I taper my wall I was to copy the window um, then I could paste that window back in the same place so if I taper this wall and then 
paste the window back in place, we've got a tapered wall. Now, all of these, uh, these objects here um, couldn't have been bent or deformed in that way if it weren't for the fact that underpinning the technology inside of Vectorworks is NURBS technology. So if I take this object, for instance, and I go um, modify convert, and we can convert that to NURBS, actually underneath the object there is there are NURBS. Now, don't be put off by the... Um, detail we're seeing there or the lack of detail um, if I ungroup that you can see I've got here a NURBS surface and that NURBS surface could be could be edited in some way to uh, to make it different so for instance um, we'll model create we're going to create an interpolated surface we're going to change its degree to a two degree and to three points. And now if we wanted to, we could lift these middle ones up a little bit to create some different surface here. So you can see underpinning the um, the, the Vectorworks objects as NURBS technology. Again here, if we go here, we can um, convert to NURBS. I'm going to use a shortcut to do that. And then we've ungrouped that. We've got a series of NURBS surfaces. So moving on, um, another way we can make NURBS surfaces is by a number of curves which join together. Now I've made some curves here and the curves roughly indicate like the top um, right edge of a boat, the transom boat and the keel of a boat. All these surfaces join up together. If we take all these surfaces and we go to again model 3D power pack and we're going to make a surface from curves. And straight away we get the sort of surface we expect from these curves. And if we take that a uh, little bit further, what we're going to do is to uh, make some surfaces, and uh, here's some I made earlier. And this is a very important part of, uh, of the technology to, to make some very good watertight, which is quite good for a boat, um, solids from surfaces. And it's a technique known as overbuilding, where I've got these surfaces and each surface is clipping the uh, the other nerve surface um, rather than trying to build something on the edge. Um, overbuilding uh, does make more dependable um, objects. So if you look around this object, you can see that uh, inside here is a watertight um, solid potentially. So if I take all of these and I go to the, the 3D power pack and I create, I do stitch and trim surfaces, straight away we create this half of a boat hull. And if we mirror that and uh, add those together as solids, we get the complete boat hull. Um, we could then uh, shell that boat hull. Um, which I've uh, done already there. But if we go to the Shell Solids tool, click on the top surface here, hit Return, and uh, maybe have a, a smaller thickness, we can make a shelled boat hull. Now, making something like this is no good unless we, we can construct it and extract from it maybe cross-section to make bulkheads. So what, we're, what we've done here is uh, make bulkheads from this. And the way I've done this is to go to a front view and we've got here um, our create cross sections or contours. And so from here I can say, okay, let's see how many, what's the distance between my contours? And I can click here to make contours. If I just delete the boat now, you'll see I've got these contours. And we've taken that a little bit further here by making those contours into solids and uh, this one has not quite been made in solid, but uh, could be done in a moment. Okay, so I'm now going to um, look at another way of using NURBS. We can, we've seen that we can make NURBS in a number of ways. And having made a NURB surface, one of the things that is very powerful that we can do with NURB surface is to duplicate objects onto that NURB surface. So we've got here two objects. We've got here some uh, hexagon here, which has got inside of it a um, another shape, which we're going to use to um, to duplicate along this surface. So here's one I've done earlier, and I've duplicated the, the those objects along the NURB surface. 
And if we look at the settings here, there's, uh, there's a number of things we can do here. This is still uh, an object which could be edited. We've duplicated this 30 along in each direction. And uh, by using some shifting of the rows and some offsetting of the rows, we've got here an object where, which is, has been created perfectly so that the hexagons uh, uh, meet up. Now, if we take that a bit further, the, the, the surface is still there. So just doing a little bit more to make this into a, a, a simple building. So I've extracted some edges from the original base surface. We're using the extract tool to do this and I can extract edges. I've also taken those edges and we projected those to the floor. So if we go to front view and see though that that is projection of those edges to the floor. And then we can loft those again to make a solid. So I've simply gone to the uh, loft surface tool and I've lofted from here to here to make a, another surface which I create into a solid. And from there I've made that into a shell object which can then then has thickness. The other thing we can do with uh, the, um, the original edges is to extrude long path. When we do extrude long path, we need a planar object that's going to travel along a series of nerve curves or a single nerve surf surface. So if we then take these two objects, the circle and the nerve surface, we can then do an extrude long path. It's saying to, to make an object like this. And then if we combine these together with the surface, and the nerves, uh, sorry, the surface and the, the wall object and the roof object, we've got here a roof. Now the roof's not uh, particularly uh, beautiful, actually. Um, I've got here several uh, versions of it. So if I just turn off the, the, the original, the original version wasn't uh, particularly beautiful because it dipped in the middle. And so all I've done here is to make a copy of that. And note, remember, I can still edit this object. So if I force select this object and double click on it, now it takes a little while to reproduce this. So um, uh, after I've edited the nerve surface, it takes about uh, 30 seconds to to um, reproduce the um, surface array. So I'm just going to go straight to um, the, the uh, surface that I've recreated. And uh, now that's the same surface, but it's been edited to, to bow upwards rather than downwards. So that's showing you um, the surface array edited. And uh, you, you, although I'm going to finish on this, uh, this note, I'll just show you how you can double click on the surface array. In fact, I'll, I'll do it to the original one. So if I go back to the original surface array, if I double click on that surface and I'm going to edit the base surface, I'll show you how we edited that. So um, I double clicked on it and we've got here a, a point down the bottom here, which is the um, causing this to bow, bow down in the middle. So if I move that point so it's going upwards and I exit this, eventually that's going to recreate the surface array, but with the amended NURB surface. So thank you very much for watching this. You've seen just a small subsection of what can be done with NURB surfaces, what they're like and what, they, what you can do with them. So thank you very much for listening and uh, I look forward to seeing you if you should uh, need any more training from CAD School in the future. Thank you.